Schmidt Sperling. I'm the editor in chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at ASC with Bill Chen, who's going to talk today about autonomous vehicles and what goes into them, how that's going to change a lot of the ecosystem, and what's the dynamics that are changing across the industry that will enable this. So, Bill, we've seen a, a lot of interest in what's coming out with autonomous vehicles. Obviously, the the last big thing was the smartphone. What is our autonomous vehicles actually the next big thing, and what do we need to get there? Well, we think that autonomous vehicle is really the next big thing for our semiconductor industry. In fact, it is for the electronic industry. Because the autonomous vehicle involves many aspects from the smart sensors and MEMS so that we can understand how the, the environment is for the vehicle, to the supercomputer at the back of the car, to all the safety features that we needed for the vehicles to go smoothly in the different highway systems in every part of the world. The autonomous vehicle involve a global change in the way that the vehicles are being developed, the vehicles are being used, and it will involve every part of the people in the world. How do you foresee this rolling out? What's the the chain of events that will have to happen because there are so many working parts in the system here. I believe that, as you just said, there are many, many different parts in the system. First, what we have today is the safety features. What do we do in safety? In the case of the safety features, then involve a lot of sensing so that we can detect the environment, we can communicate with another vehicles. So what we see today is that in US, you have the Department of Transportation mandating a ways from communication from vehicle to vehicle. And then you also see that Europe and Japan are coming up with their own versions of, of the regulation, their own versions of the standards. Of course, at the same time, we look at it, you said, oh, every car manufacturer wants to sell cars to all the different parts of the world. They have different standards. So then how do the different car companies develop technology that can be used at the different places where we need to have a way to meet those different regulations? So how do we get that? Because we're basically what we're doing is trying to get uh, standards across the industry, both for developing technology as well as within the, the uh, government bodies that, that regulate all this stuff. Is there going to be any consistency? How do we make that happen? Well, it, that would come in back to the way that we are looking at today. For example, in smartphones, smartphone makers make, make their product so that it can be used globally. We already have experiences on how to do this. What we have to do is to greatly expand this because in the autonomous vehicle, we are not just talking about communication. We are also talking about safety. We are talking about sensing. So that's where the idea of heterogeneous integration coming in. We need to be able to develop technologies that will have different parts of our semiconductor system producing different products, different ICs, MEMS, sensors, passives, so that they can put into a single module. And in that single module, it could be easily changed and easily modified to fit the different requirements at different parts of the world. Why don't you draw this out for us so we can visualize what you're talking about. So Bill, what are we looking at here? So for heterogeneous integration, for example, what we have shown over here is that we, we have a die from FAB1, a die from FAB2. One of them may be a, a node X, the one, another one may be a node Y, involving MEMS, sensors, a lot of passives, and we want to put them together in a very single package a single module, so that is why we're talking about heterogeneous integration. It will have a way in which we put different features 
and different functions into one single package and one single module. We used to try to get this all onto a single chip, and particularly in, in the, the smartphone. What's changed here? Why do we do it this way now? What is changing here is that we want to have different functions where those different functions can be customized for different needs, customized for different applications. At the same time, what we want to look at is to see that some features we want to come from Fab 1, some features from Fab 2. We don't want to, to, to use the most advanced nodes where it is not necessary to use it. I think what we are talking about right now is a economy of design. Previously, we think about economy of scale. Now we are thinking about economy of design as in meeting the needs of economy of scale. You might think about it as saying is that we want to have mass production. At the same time, we want to have a, a customized product that can do the mass production. And through this type of approach, how much of the chip actually changes every time, or how much of the package changes every time? Is 80% of it the same all the time, or is every component now unique and put together differently? What we see in the, in the heterogeneous integration is the way in which we need to put all the different ecosystems together so that you have a design and manufacturing and the system needs all come together in terms of a optimizing the total system. And the optimizing the total system is a way in which we can reach what we always call the economy of scale, but at the same time, we can meet the different requirements. So going back to the discussion that we have is that we talk about globally, different standards will come in and how do we meet the different standards? Globally, how do we go from today a certain feature, but tomorrow someone may develop a new feature, and how do we integrate that into the system? We are talking about a way in which our design will become simpler and time to market will become faster. And that's one of the keys for knocking down the cost too, right, is being able to get a design out that you know will work in much less time. Exactly. I think what you are talking about is the key aspects of our industry because we want to bring the cost down in the same way that previously the Moore's Law drive the cost down. Now we are looking at it is that a different way for us to achieve the benefit of integration, to achieve the benefit of mass production at the same time we want to have economy of scale. But there are parameters that are starting to evolve for individual markets, such as automotive. I know the IEEE is developing its IRDS, which is very, very specific for markets. Um, is that part of what's behind here, too? Well, hydrogenous integration is also a part of the IEEE um, initiative. At the same time, what we have is that we are reaching out to a community outside of IEEE, such as SEMI, such as ASME. Within IEEE, we are also reaching into the Consumer Electronic Society. We are also reaching into nano, the Nano Technology Council. So when we started with the CPMP Society, with EDS Society, with Photonics, we are also reaching out so that we will involve the total community in our technical ecosystem. So let's roll this back into automotive. How do you see this playing out across different geographies, so different regions? So what happens in Japan versus China versus Europe versus the United States? Are they all looking at the same heterogeneous integration or is it, is it region specific? We look at it saying heterogeneous integration, activity is going on. It's, we have gone to Japan, gone to China and Europe, and we see a a groundswell of interest from every part of our ecosystem, from every part 
of community from universities to research institute and particularly in industry. So we, we hear about heterogeneous integration. We've been hearing about um, system and package SIP for quite a while. What's the difference here? Well, I, I would look at it as from the perspective of SIP is always the idea that we put things, we put the different devices in a single package. So in that sense, it is something that is related to the back end of the packaging community. For hydrogenous integration, we are involving the total ecosystem. And so what you might say is that SIP, looking at it, is a, a part of the heterogeneous integration, but heterogeneous integration belongs to everybody. All of us are involved in heterogeneous integration, and searching and package is part of that initiative and part of that revolution. And this is not specifically node dependent. It's really everything working at the node that it's supposed to work at, right? That is what you're talking about is exactly right. For heterogeneous integration, we look at it saying is that we have some, some part of the ICs that is good in node one, but we also can bring in the most recent node, the most advanced node to do the job that we wanted to do. So what we have then is a way in which we customize the end result with the best node for its best function. And so in a car, you may need very fast communication between the sensor and the main logic unit, but you may not need as fast communication between the call going out and your phone, right? So that's where individual modules will become completely different. What you have is an extremely good example, because if we have a, if we are driving down the the highway and you see, you see a car in front of you and you have to immediately make decisions. That decision needs to be maybe millisecond or maybe less than millisecond. And at the same time, if you are communicating with a cloud to look at the global positioning system, that may be a different story. So what you just talked about is how do we optimize our optimize the function and optimize the need. And an autonomous vehicle, we involve almost every part of our industry, every part of the function that we are looking at. So this is the perfect example for us to look at it and set our industry it, the, when I say the industry, I mean the electronic industry. Our electronic industry is involved in every part of the revolution for the, for the autonomous vehicle, and hydrogenous integration would be an essential part of that for that to happen. Does it matter whether it's fan out wafer level packaging or 2.5D or eventually 3D IC? Where do each one of those play in this? Well, when we look at it, is that we have developed in our, in our technology different ways to address the different part of the needs. The way that you use the word fan out, they use the word 2.5D, 3D, we want to look at it and set what is the best technology for that to happen. A lot of the uh, technologies for hydrogenase integration, a lot of technologies for the uh, use in the future cars involve technologies which is wide bond, involving flip chip. We look at it and said our industry has a tremendous amount of activity, tremendous amount of capability to customize what we need to get the best technology, the most appropriate technology, the most cost-effective technology to what is needed. So that is the beauty of heterogeneous integration, the beauty of SIP. What we have now is choice. The choice for the designer, the choice for the architect to put in exactly the technology that is needed 
with the most cost-effective way. A lot of this technology, though, is relatively new. Do we have any indication at this point of which is going to be more reliable over time for these devices? Because when you talk about cars, we're talking about potentially 10, 20 years or potentially heavy use even within a, a single year. It's a whole different model. What you talked about is extremely important because in the way the car application, the, mo the, auto the automotive application, with this harsh environment, at the same time with the need for lower cost, this is a perfect place for us to get the technology proven, but at the same time we want to make sure that whatever goes in there has the highest reliability possible. And so you use the word fan out, you use the word 2.5D, and I would just come in back and say that the ongoing activities inside our industry to make this, this reliability, to make the uh, cost effectiveness to happen is going on in a very active way in our industry. In fact, I would look at it and said, a tremendous amount of understanding of materials, understanding the science behind it, have to be developed. That is why we are talking about the hydrogenous integration roadmap, because the roadmap is the way to energize every part of our ecosystem. The roadmap is a way to energize the academia, the research institute, the, the commercial industry, so that we can all work together in addressing that very important part of our society a very important part of us to go forward in making this happen for our society. Because this is not just one part that someone wants to buy a, a car for themselves. This is for everybody globally. And because it is such a, uh, a huge amount of uh, IP and, and chips coming from various different vendors, the whole ecosystem really does have to work together very effectively that's always been one of the problems or one of the, the suggested problems for heterogeneous integration. Has that been solved? Are people now working together? I think this is a gradual process because it is not a, just a technology question. This is also the business question. And as we look at it, it's that the business, the technology, will all come together in making this happen. It's not there yet, but I could see that as people sat down together on the same table and said, how do we solve the problem for us? It is not a simple problem, but also it is not an impossible problem. Bill Chan, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.